Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from DeltiasGaming.com. And today I'm going to talk about Boulder's Gate 3 and why it's shaping up to be one of the biggest games of 2023. It's going to be released on PC on August 3rd, 2023. And I'm going to answer the question, should you buy this game? Why or why not? Currently, there are two different versions of the game that you can purchase. One, you can buy it on Steam for $59.99 and you'll be getting the Digital Deluxe Edition content for free. And another is the Collector's Edition bundle that costs $269.99. So expect to spend at least $60 or more on Baldur's Gate 3 if you want to play this game. Baldur's Gate 3 is developed by Larian Studios, the company behind the Divinity Original Sin games. Baldur's Gate 3 has been in early access for players on Steam since October of 2020, and I've been playing ever since. The original Baldur's Gate games introduced important technical advancements over other RPGs at that time, and expectations are very high for the long-awaited sequel. Indeed, this game faces some tough competition from a lot of major players this year, including the upcoming juggernaut Bethesda release for Starfield. But Baldur's Gate 3 has a lot to offer RPG fans. A robust story, history, strategy, turn-based combat, a deep and engaging story with intriguing companion characters, gorgeous graphics, and visuals. The ability to play with friends and co-op are just a handful to highlight, but this game isn't going to be for everybody. I'm going to go over in detail all the things and more, analyzing what the game has to offer, how the developers have been handling early access, and what you need to know to make an informed decision is Baldur's Gate 3 worth buying. A little background and development about Baldur's Gate franchise in case you're unaware. It's a series of role-playing games set in the expansive and popular tabletop RPG games Dungeons and Dragons. The main entries in the series Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 were released in 1998 and 2000 respectively, both for PC and Mac computers. Subsequent spin-offs, expansions, enhanced edition have released on consoles, but the series has a strong history of being PC focused. The original two games were developed by Bioware and published by Interplay, but after the release of Baldur's Gate 2, a struggling Interplay lost the license to make more Dungeons & Dragons based games. After being acquired by Wizards of the Coast, the IP flopped around some for years with other studios wanting the chance to acquire the rights. Larian Studios was one of those companies, but it wasn't until they saw the success with Divinity Original Sin and the sequel Divinity Original Sin 2 that Wizards of the Coast felt confident enough in their ability to turn out a compelling game. Baldur's Gate 3 will take place almost a century after the events of the previous installments. Expect the game to be Dungeons and Dragons based in the Forgotten Realms. Moving on to gameplay mechanics and features. With the lore and world itself, combat in Baldur's Gate 3 is based on the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set. Regular movement through the world as you're exploring happens in real times, but when you enter into combat, the game seamlessly transitions into a turn-based combat mode. This challenge allows players to strategically approach combat encounters. This is a lot slower than traditional action RPG and will be a big turnoff to some players, especially if you haven't encountered this previously. More on that later. The developers have said that they design battles as puzzles, which players will have to solve with both well, swords and spells, of course. For example, the layout of combat spaces may have a bulky creature doing direct damage in front of you, with rogue archers shooting at you from rooftops, and a magic caster firing spells at you from out the window. So what's your approach? What are you going to do? What's your priority? And how are you going to handle it? Combat in Boulder's Gate 3 will require some thought and planning and won't be a button smasher like other games. And this might be jarring for some players used to fast action, higher paced games. My gamer tag Deltia actually is a dyslexic spelling from Delita Final Fantasy Tactics, a similar style turn based game. So this isn't anything new to me. Think of the combat like chess. You strategically plan out your initial attack, look for the order of attack and plan accordingly. Well, you charge in with the fire to soak up all the attention away from your wizard sitting back casting fire spells? Can you have your wizard crowd control sleep the range characters in the back? And what will happen when the enemy lands a massive critical strike on your main character? The combat also has a lot of heavy randomness to it, using dice rolls true to the form of Dungeons & Dragons Foundation. This makes for wild plays and sometimes frustrating ones, but the randomness and unpredictability is core to the game, making every encounter, playthrough, race, character, and scenario a bit different and interesting. For most gamers, this will be a much 
much slower paced experience. And if it's jarring, I'd say do not let that hold you back from trying the game because the build creation, complexity, and difficulty is where Baldur's Gate shines in terms of combat. Moving on to creating your character and who is gonna be the champion of your story. Character creator is really an important aspect of any RPG, with a lot of people enjoying the process of creating their perfect character with just the right appearance and stats. The character builder in Baldur's Gate 3 goes beyond just basic aesthetics with choices like race, possible sub-race, class, subclass, backgrounds, abilities, all part of your character creator. And you're gonna spend a lot of time in this initially. At launch, Baldur's Gate will have over 11 races, 28 sub races along with 12 classes and 46 subclasses to choose from. And Larian Studios has said that all of these pieces play an important role in your character's identity, informing who they are and how the world will react and interact with you. The character creator itself is one of the most detailed and complex we've ever seen in gaming, with tons of unique D&D races like the Dragonborn, Drow, Githyanki, and Tiefling. This is a fantasy RPG fan's imagination come to life. I will say the big downside of character creator is the bonuses. Specifically, racial bonus is utterly vital to your build. And if you do not pick the right one to mid-max your character, you will screw up your build and you will get to a later level 20 hours deep and really realize you suck because you picked the wrong race. As far as we know, you're not able to change your race or your class once you've selected it, and likely you're going to have to re-roll. I have a bunch of builds on my website, DeltiasGaming.com, because I experienced this the hard way, picking a goofy race for my paladin, only to get to level 4 and 5 and realize, yeah, I'm just not doing as good as I could. So be warned, if performance is important to you, you really need to identify and select the appropriate race. Otherwise, you're just going to be re-rolling characters and having terrible ability distributions in build. Another aspect of your character and creation is your interaction with the world. In the vast world of Forgotten Realms, all creatures and people mix and mingle and sometimes clash. Your character's identity and personality will greatly influence the story you experience. Your race choice will influence some of the dialogue options available to you. Members of your race might speak to you differently than they would for a foreigner or a stranger. Issues of trust or distrust between races make some NPC companions less likely to follow you. The main story of Baldur's Gate will follow a specific path, but the world in your character comes alive with the various branching dialogue options based on your class, your race, and other attributes. This doesn't become apparent during your initial playthrough, but reroll a new class or a new race, and you will absolutely be shocked at how different the story is. Sure, some of the quests, side quests, end up nearly the same linear direction, but the agency you have of your character rivals that of Mass Effect and Dragon Age. There will be some side quests you can pick up immediately or skip and come back later, and there will also be companions who can join you on your quest, or you can dismiss, skip them, or actually kill them. And these companions play an integral part to your party build and load out, and some can be romanced. Speaking of romance, romance is going to be a big core component of companions, and it's a lot different than traditional games from what we've seen. Talk a couple times, have a cutscene, hook up, and that's it. That's not how it's going to work in Baldur's Gate 3. You need to invest in your romantic partner. If you screw it up, they'll walk away. And it's not as simple as, hey, let's wait till the last mission in the game and right before we're going to hook up. Romance done right in a video game is hard, and you want to be drawn to that character through interactions, quests, and stories. And unlike other RPGs, you really need to invest in the aspect to see the full story bloom. Other NPCs interact throughout the world will present scenarios in which you can intervene, often having to make a moral choice that will have in-game consequences for your character and also how your party companions feel about you. This will also affect romance options. The consequences of all these choices will affect how your journey and your story experience play out. Your playthrough will not be exactly the same as anyone else's, nor are you likely to have the same experience if you go back and create an entirely new character to play again. Again, this is not very obvious your first time through, but like me as a content creator, playing constantly different builds and races and trying to experiment and mid-max them, it's shocking how different it really is, and that's the core strength of the game. Moving on to graphics and visuals, in order to help tell a story and cover all the different narrative branches and possibilities, Larian Studio recently announced that at launch, the game will have over 174 hours of cinematics. Lots of motion capture was done for Baldur's Gate, 3, and it really gives character expressions and movement a believable quality. 
Thank you, Vic kind of has the opposite of Mass Effect Andromeda when that launched. The character creator and all the appearance options provided gives players an endless combinations of ways to make their character look their own. Players might be worried about the top-down isometric view, that they might not be able to see their character and companions up close. They should keep in mind that there is hours of cinematic and cutscenes and close-up shots of your character. It's only really exploring in combat where this is a lot hidden. Lots of great storytelling moments and conversations will happen in those cutscenes and the graphic detail of them is greatly enhanced. Additionally, the environment in Baldur's Gate 3 are complex, detailed, vibrant, and immersive atmosphere effects, especially the beginning of the game. I remember after the initial cutscene, seeing the ship and all the fire and flames and hearing the sound effects and blood and gore, and I'm like, this is a masterclass and an introduction level story. Love it. All in all, regarding the visuals, you may ask, does the graphic quality of Baldur's Gate 3 really push the envelope of technology on current PC and consoles? I'd put the graphic quality in between Mass Effect Andromeda and The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 is the apex of modern generation games, and Baldur's Gate 3 is believable enough to be considered in the modern era. The combat has some flashy cinematic captures with big animations when you critically strike. As most of the game is focused on story, that's where bulk of the effort comes in story interaction in the cutscenes and the graphics and the dialogue screen. If you want the highest fidelity graphics, this game's probably not going to be for you. But if you want incredible story, a lot of cutscenes and dialogues and modern day graphics, it definitely has that. Moving on to multiplayer and cooperative play. Given its foundation into tabletop world of Dungeons and Dragons, it should come as no surprise that Larian Studios have allowed for multiplayer featured and cooperative gameplay options. A group of four friends can play together through Baldur's Gate 3 can play in a way reminiscent of typical tabletop experiences. The way I've been playing multiplayer is starting a brand new character together. So you hit new game and you wait for people to join you on Steam and you all create a character together and jump in into the action, create your character and whenever he's ready to go, you hit venture forth. And when this happens, typically the person that is the lobby host is the leader. That person has companions. If you're using any, you can assign them to other players. You're the primary person that moves around, but everyone has some autonomy me. So you and the other players in your group have the freedom to roam around independently, but are placed in important dialogue when it pops up. Combat allows you to take independent actions as well. Overall, the person that's leading or hosting the lobby has most of the control, but the other players have some autonomy, especially in combat and build creation. When someone leaves the group, or if your friend isn't able to jump online, you can simply continue playing, control their character kind of like a companion. This is a really great way to experience other builds and experimenting together. Moreover, you can level much faster if everyone is spread out, completing quests, selling items, and initiating quests. Don't wander off to too far if you don't know what you're getting into because you don't want to encounter something by yourself in a very challenging game. Another fun element is that all players can have a say when it comes to dialogue options. Whichever player prompts the conversation initially remains in control, but other players can mark which option they prefer. BG3 isn't an MMO, so don't expect sprawling city with hundreds of players. From my perspective, the multiplayer feels very intentional versus other games which try to tack it on to the last minute. The story in your character's path is the foundation of the game and having a small group to play with is a great touch. Moving on to the story and or length of the story. The breadth and depth of the narrative in Baldur's Gate 3 is huge. It's the strength and what many people who play and enjoy RPGs love the most. A story where the choices you make matter and it can take different paths, a lot of different paths, and the ending can be wildly different depending on what you do. And this is a game where after you complete it or complete Act 1 in Early Access, you can create a completely different character and have a wildly different experience. The amount of replayability this game has cannot be overstated and potentially fans and me could be playing this and enjoying it for years and years and years. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game you have to invest in. Developers have estimated the game will take at least 75 hours to complete, even if you run straight through the entire story. That's assuming you're watching the cutscenes and dialogue. After I've been playing Early Access for quite a bit, I know exactly what encounters to go to, what barrels to loot, what people to pickpocket, what chests to get. But your initial playthrough, you're just constantly exploring blindly, and it's absolutely amazingly fun. But do not expect Baldur's Gate 3 to be something like Hogwarts Legacy, where you can get through it pretty quickly. You're going to have to spend a lot of time on this game, and that could be good or bad depending on how you balance your and prioritize your time in gaming. Take it slow. It's going to be around for a while. 
The amount of content is staggering, like I said, even in early access, with only one act to play. It's mind-numbing to me how much there is. Then the branching dialogue choices is the main centerfold of why I think this game's gonna be an RPG home run. I've played the different classes to gather research for builds and tier lists, and every time it's the same, but very different. One playthrough I killed my companion didn't even know I was gonna do it. Another one, my companion left a party. In one playthrough, I destroyed a very difficult fight and on a different character and a different build. I had to reload a hundred times because I picked the wrong race and it sucked. It was completely different. One playthrough, I was able to dialogue bypass an important fight. Another one, it was initiated on site without any dialogue. The dice roll system in dialogue is core to the story. And initially, this was a huge turnoff to me. I didn't understand it and I didn't care for the randomness. I just wanted to select what I wanted and get my results. But the randomness, just like the combat, makes the game much more interesting. Sure, you can save and just reload a hundred times before you get that 20 dice score to get the exact narration that you want. But the playthrough and randomness when things don't go your way adds a lot to the replayability. The dice roll combined with insane amounts of branching dialogue makes the game feel like a Skyrim level RPG. Every playthrough is different. Every playthrough, you learn something new about the story, the game, and yourself. You constantly see and experiment new things and wonder, what if I played next time as a drow bard? What would happen? And that leads me to the final question. Should you buy Baldur's Gate 3? To summarize it up, buying Baldur's Gate 3 guarantees you an immersive RPG experience, amazing story, great combat, build crafting, stunning graphics, and the chance to really control your character's story. You have agency over your character, and it's very, very different every single playthrough. If you're a fan of the genre or you love Dungeons and Dragons, you're just simply craving a new epic story, this is a must-have game because it has a lot of content and it's really fun. But I would honestly say avoid this game if you want fast-paced action, like a shooter or an action-based RPG. That top-down isometric viewpoint and the turn-based combat might be a massive turnoff that people just can't get over. Also avoid this game if you don't want long cutscenes and tons of dialogue options, or you're just not a fan of Dungeons and Dragons and fantasy. This probably won't be for you. But if you're watching this video, I imagine you're an RPG fan that love stories, combat, build crafting, and just having fun in a unique immersive universe. Final thoughts, wrapping this up. The developers, Larian Studio, have created a masterful world to explore, filled with interesting characters, amazing stories, and morally complex choices that's not just black or white. You'll have the opportunity to shape your character's destiny, make unique alliances, really impactful decisions, and consequences you're not even gonna know until the end of the game. It's a truly immersive and interactive adventure, and I think for most RPG fans, this is a must-have. Well, that wraps it up for me. Hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll do more BG3 content. Also, check the links below for Baldur's Gate 3 builds and guides. And check me out on twitch.tv slash Gaming, where I plan to play this game during launch. Thanks for watching.